Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. We have been studying about the Lewis Langmuir concept of covalent bonds and I told you about the causal Lewis approach and how electrovalent bonds are made according to them. Moving on with that knowledge, let us now try to understand the electrovalent bond better. According to the causal Lewis approach, a metal atom, when it loses an electron, it forms a positive ion which is known as a cation. And when it forms a cation, the energy that is required to remove that electron is known as the ionization enthalpy. Similarly, if you have a non-metallic atom and you add an electron to it, it forms an anion and this anion is negatively charged and the negatively charged anion when it is formed, the energy change that is involved in this reaction is known as the electron gain enthalpy. If the anion acquires its octet, then the electron gain enthalpy can have a negative value. Another thing that these enthalpies, they have positive or negative values. The ionization enthalpy is always positive. Positive enthalpy means that energy has to be given to carry out that change. And negative enthalpy means that energy is given out by the system. I would like you to remember that all chemical reactions take place with the intention of acquiring stability. And stability is acquired when energy is lowered. Therefore, any reaction which is exothermic, that is which allows energy to go out or which results in the loss of energy should lead to stability. So I told you that formation of the positive ion is always, the enthalpy here is always positive. It means it is always an endothermic reaction. It always gains energy. Yet the configuration of the metallic atom, it, if it acquires the noble gas configuration, that configuration is stable, but on the whole, it gains energy here. And in the anion formation, the energy may be lost or gained depending on the atom. And when we did the periodic classification of elements, I did explain the ionization, uh, electron gain enthalpies to you and the trips. Now the negative of electron gain enthalpy is known as electron affinity. The negative of electron gain enthalpy is known as electro, uh, electron affinity. So this is just about the energies that are involved when a cation and an anion are formed. So usually it is the metals that form cations, except there is one exception that is ammonium ion. Ammonium ion consists of nitrogen and hydrogen and both nitrogen and hydrogen are non-metals, yet ammonium on the whole as an ion acts as a metal, that is it acts as a cation. Except for ammonium, which is a cation and which is non-metallic, all other cations are metals. And non-metals, they are the ones that usually form the anions. That is, they are the ones that gain electrons and form the negatively charged anions. Once the ions are formed, what happens? The metal, which was a gaseous metal, forms a uh, an anion, sorry, forms a cation, which is gaseous too. And a non-metal, which was gaseous, forms an anion, which was gaseous too. But now, these two gaseous cation and anion come together, and since they have positive and negative charges, electrostatic forces of attraction pull these atoms together, and they form a solid, which is known as the, as the ionic compound. The ionic compound basically then consists of only ions, that is cations and anions, which are formed individually, but they stay together. And they stay together because of electric charges which are holding them together. These charges or these forces of attraction due to electrical, opposite electrical poles is, are known as Coulombic forces. So, Coulombic forces hold these ions together and they hold them so strongly together that the resultant is a solid. Such compounds are known as electrovalent compounds and such a bond is known as an electrovalent bond. 
When we use the word bond, we actually mean a shared pair of electrons in the case of covalent bonds. So here, an electrovalent bond, we may call it a bond, but it is not actually a bond because it's only ions which are staying together due to Coulombic forces of attraction. This should be clear in our mind. So electrovalent bond is not a bond as such, but it is the formation of ions which stay together due to electric or Coulombic forces. Now these electrovalent compounds that are formed, they are crystalline solids. When we say they are crystalline, they're not amorphous. They have definite structures. A crystal is one which has definite structures. For example, we wear crystals in jewelry which have definite structures. And it is because of these definite structures, the crystalline solids, they have a very distinct, each one has distinct shapes. And this three-dimensional arrangement of the ions in the in the electrovalent compound, it forms a structure which is known as the lattice. The lattice is basically the three-dimensional arrangement of the cations and anions in an electrovalent compound or in the electrovalent crystal. Now, what does the structure or what does this lattice depend on? The structure of the lattice depends on the size of the ions, how big or small are the ions, what's the difference between their sizes? If one is very large and one is very small, their arrangement would be different. The packing would be different. And if both are almost the same size and they're forming solids, their packing would be different. So the crystal structure, it depends on the size of the ions and the packing arrangement, that is the ratio. Do we have one cation is to two anions or do we have two cations is to one anion or do we have them in one is to one ratio? So all this decides the structure of the crystal or the lattice of the crystal. We'll be studying the crystal lattices later, but right now our focus is on the electrovalent bond and why do we want to know about this lattice? I'll just come to that later. Now I'll just give you this one example. This is a sodium chloride crystal. This diagram that I've made, it's a cube and if you see all the corners of, a cube, of the cube are occupied by sodium ions which I've shown by blue dots. So these blue dots are sodium ions and the red dots in the middle of each edge I've shown you a chloride ion. And in the middle of this entire side you see a sodium. So what do we see in this structure? Every sodium is being alternated by a chloride ion. So in sodium chloride crystal, the number of sodium ions is equal to the number of chloride ions. And if we look at them, we find that for every sodium, there is one chloride and every sodium is alternated by a chloride ion. If you look at this structure closely, you could, you could think that it is somewhat like this Rubik's cube. The structure would be similar to a Rubik's cube. I would like you to imagine here, looking at the diagram there, that the corners, the corners of the cube, the four cubes that you see in the corners, let us assume they are sodiums. And if they are sodiums, then the one in middle, that is the one in the middle of each side, these four would then be chlorides. And the one in the center would be a sodium, right? So you have sodiums on the corners and the sodium in the center and chlorides are on the in the center of each edge let us say. So if this cube is a chloride and this is a sodium now even if I turn this I find this is a sodium so this will be a chloride sodium chloride sodium chloride sodium chloride and sodium. The same would be on the back side of the cube. If the front has this, the back should also have the same arrangement. So what if you imagine this to be this cube to consist of nine cubes on this side. And if you see there are nine on each side that you can see in the middle of this. If you look at the central one, these should just like the edge has three cubes. This center one should also have three cubes. Right? This one in the center should also have three cubes. If this has three cubes, this is a chloride. Right? I told you the ones in the center. This is a sodium because the chlorides are only here. 
if this is a sodium then the one in the middle of this if we go right take this as the nine cubes like these nine cubes if you imagine this one to be the nine cubes then the one in the center the one in the center here yeah the cube in the center here of these three and in the middle that should what should it be if this is sodium that one in the middle should be a chloride and if you go to the other end here on the opposite side this should again be a sodium right so if this is a sodium there's a chloride in middle and a sodium on the other side so if you look at this crystal lattice you will observe that it's somewhat cubical arrangement and in this cubical arrangement of sodium and chloride ions, the sodium and chloride ions are in the ratio of 1 is to 1. And we have for every sodium, there's a chloride ion and the arrangement is such that they alternate with each other. And it is this attraction between the positive and negative which holds them together. And if the Coulombic forces are holding these ions together, and that results in the formation of a solid from gaseous ions. You can imagine how strong the attraction must be to result in the formation of a solid. And when this solid is formed, a lot of energy is given out. And the energy that is given out is known as the lattice enthalpy. It is known as the lattice enthalpy. This formation of lattice provides stability to the crystal. So we would imagine that an ionic compound would be formed, would be stable if the enthalpy, the sum of these two enthalpies, the positive ion, formation of negative ion, if the overall sum is negative, that is if on the whole energy is being lost, the formation of an ionic compound should take place. And if the sum of these two energies is positive, the ionic compound should not be formed. So we would assume for stability to be acquired, the positive ion and the negative ion formation on the whole should be exothermic. Even if one of these, the first one we know is always endothermic and the second should be, exo is, should be exothermic for it to be a stable uh, compound. Why? Because this should be exothermic and the amount of heat given out should be more than the amount of heat absorbed in the first step. Only then, logically, should the compound be formed. So let us see what are the enthalpies, the ionization enthalpy of sodium. The ionization, what is ionization enthalpy? It is the amount of heat given out in the formation of one mole of the ions of a metallic substance. So when you have one mole of sodium atoms and they form from the gaseous state, to form one mole of ions of that substance in the gaseous state. So if we have sodium ion, for one mole of sodium ion to be formed, 495.8 kilojoules per mole of energy is absorbed. It's endothermic. The electron gain enthalpy is the amount of energy that is absorbed or given out in the formation of one mole of anions. So the the electron gain enthalpy of chloride ions is negative 348.7 kilojoules per mole which means for the formation of one mole of chloride ions this much of energy should be should be given out but the am amount of energy absorbed in the formation of one mole of sodium ions is more than the amount of energy that is given out in the formation of one mole of chloride ions so we would assume that this crystal should not exist because it is on the whole it is not leading to stability but in the third step but on the other hand we should also know that sodium on losing one electron acquires octet and chloride also on gaining one electron is acquiring the octet so that should according to our logic should have been the main factor to decide it but we find that on the whole this energy is positive which means that it is an endothermic reaction and so it should not take place but once it is endothermic and due to coulombic, coulombic forces the sodium and chloride ions attract each other and they form the crystal and that crystal becomes so stable it loses energy and in the formation of one mole of the crystal the amount of energy given out is 788 kilojoules per mole 
this negative value is so much more than the 147 that was gained that on the whole the formation of the sodium chloride crystal becomes an exothermic process when it becomes an exothermic process on the whole it means that it is leading to that much more stability and that's the reason why the sodium chloride crystal exists so we realize in the formation of ionic or electrovalent compounds it's not just the formation acquiring of octet that gives it stability rather we have to take into consideration the the lattice enthalpy too and what is this lattice enthalpy lattice enthalpy is defined as the energy that is required to completely separate one mole of solid ionic compound into its gaseous components that is cation and anion the gaseous ions it's nothing but the same thing that the amount of energy which is given out when one mole of uh, an electrovalent compound is formed is the lattice enthalpy which would be equal to the amount of energy which is given out when you uh, which is required when you have to separate these these atoms these ions to form their individual gaseous ions it would be equal so whether in the formation of one mole of energy the amount of energy that is given out in the formation of one mole of the ionic compound or you could say it is the amount of energy which has to be given to separate them back into the individual gaseous ions would be the lattice enthalpy so from this we understand that electrovalent compounds when we study their stability and their formation we have to think about the octet the electronic configurations and also the other energies that are associated in the case of electrovalent compounds that is the lattice enthalpy if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye